Death diving. What is death diving? Death diving is this crazy sport where people huck their bodies off of cliffs and do the craziest tricks to land in what looks like it's going to be a belly flop, but then they fold into a pike at the last second to land feet and hands first into the water, preventing the belly flop or preventing any injury. So what is death diving onto hard ground? It's an idea that combines death diving into water as well as the safety role. So taking those principles, we can actually death dive do crazy tricks in the air, hit the ground in a weird position, and as long as we're touching a foot and the hand to the ground, can roll out of it and save you from a potential injury. But before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to let you guys know about the Majawa Run Plus headphones. These are waterproof bone conduction headphones, which means they go around my ear and send the sound into my ear from the outside instead of being inside my ear. These are awesome for going out running, doing parkour, any type of training I'm doing where I want to be able to hear my surroundings as well as listen to music or podcasts. I'm going to give my review on these headphones at the end of the video, so be sure to stay tuned to learn more about those. All right, death diving onto hard ground. Before going outside and trying this yourself, make sure you know how to do a basic safety roll basic back roll, how to dive roll, and I'd say that's about it. As long as you're comfortable with rolling in various ways on the ground, as well as doing dive rolls from height, I think you'll feel pretty comfortable working your way into the death dive roll. So to begin this move, you want to start close to the ground in your basic folded position, just like the death dive into water. Only from here, we're going to begin rolling from that position in different directions to start getting a feel for it. The goal of this move is as you land, you want to be able to send yourself in a direction because that little bit of momentum is going to help you roll and disperse that impact. Once you've gotten familiar with rolling from ground in different directions, you can start adding a little bit of jump to it. And you can start by just already being in the position, jumping and rolling and then practice it a couple of times with the one leg landing. One foot helps if I'm landing at a sharper angle, I can use my other leg in the air to help kick me over my head because the last thing I want is to pile drive into the ground face planting. And so using that kicking leg can often help me just get that little bit of kick over I need to get into the roll. Now the goal with this move is to absorb the impact with your feet and use your hands to help push into the roll. Because if it's all going into your hands, it's going to be a lot of impact on your wrist. So it's really important that you, even if it's just touching your feet down a little bit, that's going to take a lot of that initial impact for you to send that roll. Once you've gotten comfortable with doing it from a little jump, start adding a bigger jump. Now that you've gotten comfortable with the landing position for the death dive roll, now we can start adding a little bit of flair. First step I like to do is to try and jump, kick my legs and arms back for just a second, kind of like a flying squirrel, and then fold them again into that pike position. When starting out, it's best if you do this short and fast because you want to make sure you have time to get to that pike position. After you've mastered the flying squirrel into the death dive roll, next it's up to you where you want to take it. If you want to try and start incorporating it into flips or spins, at least having this technique down, you'll know how to recover if you're ever falling in a precarious position and need to pull yourself out of it with the death dive roll. So there you have it, the death dive roll. Be sure to practice this safely. Be aware of what your body is capable of and always progress into things slowly because you don't want to get injured trying to learn a move to prevent injury. Now my review on the Run Plus headphones. So I've actually really enjoyed these for training, especially because of the way they just sit around my ear. They actually stay on really well while I'm parkour training or running or doing things like that compared to most earbuds or other headphones I've tried to train with. They usually fall off during flips. These don't fall off during flips unless I'm doing like a fast spinning flip like a cork or back full. So that's the only time they've come off. But even then when they come off, they only just come off like to the side like this. They're not actually flying off in my experience so far with them. So, so far they've been my favorite training headphones for two reasons. Because they stay on my head so well and they also aren't blocking my ears. So I can actually hear what's going on around me. And for me, I found this very important because as a parkour athlete or skateboarder or whatever I'm doing, I found audio feedback is very important for my depth perception to know where my feet are by the sound my skateboard makes or the sound different things are making as I'm jumping or climbing. 
I never realized how much those affected my spatial awareness until I've blocked my ears with earbuds or other things. So for the most part, I've just avoided training uh, with earbuds or anything in general that blocked my ears because of the way it affected my training. Whereas these don't affect my training that way. So I've really enjoyed training with them. And another perk I've found with them is that as a dad, anytime I'm around the house, it's important that I'm able to hear my kids. But sometimes I just want to be able to listen to music or podcasts while I'm doing whatever around the house, but I can't always block my ears because I need to hear if a kid is screaming or crying. And these allow it so I can do that and still hear what's going on. And so they've been super beneficial in that way. The only negatives I've found so far about them is that lying down, because this back part comes off the head, when I'm lying down this tends to push the placement off where I can't hear properly. So I'll either adjust it where they're more on my head or find a different position for them, which isn't optimal. Um, but again, these are mainly for training. They're not for lounging around so much. And then the other issue is the audio isn't going to be quite as high quality as in-ear headphones uh, because they're, they're not in your ears. They're coming a little bit more spatially. The sound is slightly more shallow. But for me, the benefit of being able to hear my surroundings outweighs the audio quality. Comes with a little charger that just has a little magnetic clip that just automatically snaps on the USB plug-in. So they're super easy to charge. These are my first bone conduction headphones, so I can't compare them to any other bone conduction headphones I've tried, but I'm definitely going to keep using them going forward because of the benefits I've found from them for training, and just being around the house. So definitely check them out. I'll have a link where you can learn more about them in the description. There you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the short review as well as the tutorial on death dive rolls. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.